Um, from the standpoint of a small or medium business, uh, how um, can a person who sees a certain business process or sees a certain information uh, collection that he wants to spread among his employees or certain of them, how does he go about doing that with this? Um, so, so for a small business user um, with something like Mashup Center, um, I think you have to look at kind of two groups of people within that small business. For, for the actual business user, um, what they would do is, is open up a, a browser-based, simple browser-based tool and through drag and drop kind of visual metaphors, take a collection of widgets that have been um, made available <coughs> to that small business. Um, and compose together um, this application out of the feeds of data that they have. Now they might get those widgets um, as a set of pre-canned things, like maybe they have weather widgets or news feed readers or things like that, so there's some generic capabilities that are there. Um, they might create those widgets through some wizards that, that talk to their existing databases or mail systems or sources of data and, and expose that information into this, this graphical palette. Um, or they might actually have to create some custom widgets, and so they go to their, their uh, tech lead in the company or their software developer that they, they work with and have that guy use something like the Webster Smash components to build a customized widget that talks to their data systems and exposes that data in a way that then can be used on this graph. Webster wow. Smash is the scripting language. Yeah, Webster Smash is the component of the mashup story that's a, a software development platform based on scripting that's a small, agile platform for quickly building apps. Either standalone apps or widgets that get exposed through a catalog into the, the graphical tool that the non-developer would use to visually construct their app. Okay, so if the small company, say, was, uh, was um, selling um, articles of clothing uh, off push carts, scarves or, you know, football scarves, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and um, the, the owner wanted the, the people to read a, a fashion wire feed mm -hmm. just to be, you know, aware of what's in yep. the industry, but he also wanted them to be aware of the weather in different cities in a state or country. Right. Uh, he could put that together, uh, sure. just using existing the right. feed reader, and the feed reader he'd put in the link to the whatever the fashion wire or, right. or, or right. whatever. Right. So, so in that kind of application, there'd be uh, an existing set of widgets, like a feed reader and a weather widget, that they, he would configure through simple configuration to point to the, the news feed data for his fashion news, right? Um, he might connect that on a page with the weather information. And they might, maybe he also has a custom widget they created that connects to their sales data and can show, you know, sales results by region um, and, and help him correlate um, the, the fashion news with, with his sales information. Yeah, so he would have been internal. I mean, yeah. a, a, so a combination of internal information with with news, public news, and, and regional uh, sales and managers regional. could uh, view each other's data and, right. and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Right. And so, so the mashup platform kind of provides all those components. It provides the tool that the business user can use to kind of get the end application put together. It provides the tools to expose their existing information uh, in their internal company into those those environments. And it provides a platform for developers to build some custom uh, applications or widgets that, that are customized to their particular and the, these, these widgets can be both uh, staff or, you know, uh, internally facing or, or customer facing. Sure. Sure. Such as we either. talked about earlier, the movie theater that has shows available seats. Yep. Right. Or, um, and so they could certainly create widgets that were intended to be consumed by their customers to help them get insight into how their business runs. Or they could be building widgets like for the sales manager that's looking at internal information and helping him do his job better. Right. So, and and they can be uh, uh, put up on uh, on on a, on a web. Uh, public website sure. as well. You know, yeah, they can be, this, absolutely this is, be shared, and there's a, this is how a many, standard model for describing those widgets that can be consumed by the tools. And how many tickets we have left to the hockey match, or yeah. or right. that sort of thing, or even you know internally how how close we are to sales goals and targets, and that could be yeah, absolutely. Any of those and all types of scenarios. the little details like uh, bar co bar uh, chart colors and all that can be. Yeah, some of that kind of stuff can be provided by the widgets, and some of uh, some of those types of scenarios are are relatively easy to, to have pre-canned. You know, they take existing feeds and they display them. Some of those scenarios will require you to do some custom development to expose that information in a way that's that's easy for the regular business user to, to take advantage of, and and that's where something like Smash comes in to provide that that lightweight platform. For yeah, but by, by and large, this is something where 
a lot of a lot of uh, useful stuff can be sort of put together ad hoc by yeah the business absolutely. user as and, long as he knows what he wants right and 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 it's certainly one of those things where you get the network effect that as the catalog grows as the set of assets in that catalog grows over time the value of the platform goes up over time and, and maybe you'll find initially that you're doing some amount of custom widget creation for your environment. And then over time, you've kind of built the critical mass of custom widgets that you needed such that most of the new scenarios you try to build, you can just simply uh, wire together yeah, widgets. Uh, or, or your widget can then become uh, uh, useful to somebody else. I right. mean, if you, there, right. there are possibilities of sharing them. Yeah, and you can also take composites of widgets that you've wired together and export them back to the catalog as essentially a widget itself. So there's a kind of layering effect. Where so you have this uh, weather and, 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 and news feed and, and push cart uh, statistics widget that can go from selling scarves to selling ice cream or hot dogs. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So you kind of generalize it yeah. a little bit, re-expose yeah. it as a new widget, and, and then somebody else can then take that thing and, and reuse it. Uh, what has the take-up been so far? I mean, widgets are not, you know, they, they didn't start with the with the, the mashup center. Sure. Uh, what's the um, take-up? So, so the, the take-up on the concepts, of course, yeah. I think have been very high, and there are other um, systems out there that that have the concept of widgets in them. Uh, this particular technology, of course, is all relatively new. Um, some of, you know, all of it kind of pre-release form. So certainly huge adoption of the concepts, um, you know, early stages on the actual products here. So companies do use these things. Yeah, know, they use them in, in various fashions. Yeah, yeah. I think they use in, them in, in, in the states here, in right? mostly informal kind of ways yeah. right now. They're um, then usually even like employee created without anybody. Yeah, there's yeah there's probably lots of under your desk stuff going on. 